Hello, my name is Brian Vandegrift, and I'm here today to talk to you a little bit about two concepts that pertain to disaster recovery. And as you start developing a disaster recovery solution that you really need to keep in mind and how it impacts your organization and the cost of your disaster recovery solution. Those concepts are RTO, which stands for Recovery Time Objective, and RPO, which stands for Recovery Point Objective. And to try to further define those, it's probably best to draw a timeline. In the middle of the timeline, we'll call that zero hour. It's when an event happens. So, you know, it might be a lightning strike, pipes bursting, it may be the building burning down, whatever it is. Let's just say it's a lightning strike. So as time moves forward from the event, that is a measure of recovery time objective. So let's say that your DR plan, you can recover your data in 12 hours, okay? So if that's the case and it takes you 12 hours for users to be back online and connected to the data that was lost in the event, then your RTO for your DR plan is 12 hours, okay? That might be 24 hours for your plan, six hours for your plan. It, however long it takes you to get users connected back to the data is a measurement called RTO, all right? And then you go backwards in time from zero event. And the longer you go from zero event is your RPO, recovery point objective. And it's really a measurement as to how fresh or stale the data is when you do recover it, right? So most companies back up their data once an evening. Usually they wait till the users go home and everybody's offline. So let's say 8 p.m. is when the last backup or copy was performed, okay? So if that zero hour was 8 a.m. the next morning, well then your RPO was 12 hours also, right? But it was a good 12 hours because probably very little new data came in or was changed in that time just the email from the people that were up real late the night before, right? But let's say the zero hour is a little different. Let's say it's 5 p.m. the next day. Well, that's a little worse, right? Because you had a whole 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., most likely, of people going in and changing data, new data arriving, email in and out, the whole nine yards. So that's a little different. That's what, 21 hours? and a lot of data changed. So even with the same solution, depending on when the data might have gotten corrupted or lost to how much data is, that's a much bigger impact to the organization and more data that's either gonna have to be recreated or you're just gonna have to not ever get back. Um, that's got a bigger impact to the organization. So you try to, from an RPO perspective, you try to define what is the most data we could lose. And you gotta really figure from it that way because you can't always bank that a failure is going to happen in the morning before the next um, work day starts. So really, you could have a disaster all the way up till 7.59 till we get another backup at 8 p.m. that next night, right? So your exposure there is 23 hours and 59 minutes for an RPO that does a once a night backup, okay? And so the impact of this, as you start planning for your, your backup strategy and your disaster recovery strategy, it's really all about money, right? So how much money am I, lo am I losing while my users are not working and connected to the data they need to do their jobs? Just as much as you have to impact, you think of the impact of how much data did, could we possibly lose in this scenario? And so disaster recovery planning is all about trying to have the lowest cost solution and the least amount of impact cost-wise to the organization for that data being offline. There it is, RTO and RPO.